Written around 1550 BCE to 50 BCE, the Egyptian Book of the Dead is a guidebook to help the dead's journey through the afterlife by giving a number of magic spells. In Egypt, death was the beginning of a journey through the underworld called Duat, to get to the other side of life. You would either get to salvation or annihilation. The goal of every Egyptian was to survive this treacherous journey, so the Book of the Dead was left inside the coffin of the dead to help them navigate their way towards salvation, where they would continue life with their loved ones, and more specifically for the kings to join gods. I should also point out that the book was originally the privilege of kings, but later became more widely available to others, including elites, priests, and even general public. So the text was somewhat different for different people. Therefore, to call it a book might give people the impression of a uniform or a standardized text, but it was more like a collection of spells which were different for different people, also depending on the period. It contained spells and texts which varied from person to person. There was no printing press, so people had to commission someone to prepare one for themselves. Therefore, they could customize it. Or, if there was a pre-written one, it varied from scribe to scribe. But it also changed through the centuries. Some were more elaborate and some were simple. But they all contained spells to help you through the journey in the afterlife. One of the most famous ones surviving to today is the Papyrus of Annie, belonging to a scribe called Annie, which was discovered in 1888 and now sits in the British Museum in London, UK. I should clarify one thing, the Egyptians believed in life. Life was so precious for them that they believed in life after death. For the ancient Egyptians, death was a journey to another life. Just like crossing a dangerous river or a jungle to get to the other side where you were safe again, that's why they mummified their kings so they could live forever. Well, to some extent their wish came true because thousands of years later we still have Egyptian mummies intact. In other words, they may not be alive, but we can see them and know them. Unlike millions and billions of humans who have dissolved into earth. So the ancient Egyptians believed in life, and death was just a little setback or test, and the Book of the Dead was a way to make sure the dead could get through the trial and come alive on the other side where they could live forever. The Book of the Dead is made up of 192 magic spells. Today, self-help books have rules or secrets or lessons. Magic spells in ancient Egypt were considered solutions to real problems. In real life, you need scientific solutions, but in the realm of death, magic was as good as anything to let you come out on the other side intact. Ancient Egyptians' religious belief was highly based on magical thoughts and spells, so you couldn't really separate religion from magic. Knowledge of something or knowing the name of something gives you the power over that thing. If you knew the name of a god, you had access to that god, so to speak. It's like knowing a secret about someone, you suddenly have the power to control that person if you're inclined to. You could even blackmail that person. So knowledge was truly powerful. In the same way you couldn't separate words from action, they were one and the same thing. Or two signs of the same coin. Harry Potter says a word and something happens. Leaders utter a word, the world changes forever. Each spell has a particular purpose like allowing the dead to know and navigate the afterlife correctly, help them understand gods, understand what happens to them, how to get past obstacles, fight demons, and finally how to deal with gods' judgment trials at the end of their journey. To understand it, think of a dangerous journey in the wilderness and you need a guidebook telling you what to do in each step of the way and how to keep yourself alive and arrive on the other side of death. In ancient Egypt, dead person faced three important challenges in their terrifying journey after death. Death was the ultimate ordeal or test a person faced, so your job was to enter salvation or resurrection and avoid annihilation or mortality. The book allowed a guarantee for immortality, and your jewels and treasures allowed an easier passage through death. And the first and immediate phase after death was how to preserve the body, so mummification was used to keep the deceased intact. One of the first rituals or spells is to awaken after death by opening their mouth to make sure they eat so they survive. Eyes to see and ears to hear. For the ancient Egyptians, the heart was the most important organ in the body, responsible for the person's intelligence as well as memory and the rational faculty which allowed the dead to remember things, specifically their name was written in spell 25. Today the brain is the rational organ while the heart is the irrational or emotional. 
so for the dead body, the heart had to be preserved. If something happened to it, the journey of the afterlife would become far more difficult without intelligence and memory. The second challenge the dead faced was the journey in the afterlife through the series of gates, caves, mountains, all guarded by supernatural creatures. There were blood-sucking demons, snake-eating monsters, wild animals such as snakes, a giant beetle, and other obstacles trying to derail your journey to survive. But at the same time, you also had helper gods, for example, Anubis, a dog-like protector god to help you get to the other side of the treacherous underworld. The realm of Osiris, the god of fertility. The book can help navigate it all. The dead had to use spells to fight or even dodge these obstacles, but also use them when they met various gods, as well as living in the fields of reeds, a kind of paradise where food, water were plentiful, which is perhaps an allegory to the banks of the River Nile. Since to live comfortably, one had to work, so the dead were also given little statues of servants who would work the field for the dead. So the journey in the afterlife was pretty similar to this life in many ways. The third and final challenge for the dead is the final interview or judgment before gods, specifically Osiris and Mat. This is called the negative confession, a little similar to the Christian confession or the final judgment. In this stage, the dead confesses that he hasn't committed any sins or broken any of the 42 commandments, which later became 10 in the Bible. So it was a lot tougher to be ancient Egyptians than a Christian. Because for Christians, there are only 10, but for the Egyptians, there were 42 commandments. Life has gotten easier as human civilization has flourished more and more. The most climactic moment in the book is the weighing of the heart. The dead person presents his heart to be weighed against a feather. This tells the god if the man has been a good boy or a naughty boy. If it's heavier or lighter, there's a huge terrifying monster called Amit who would devour the dead. If the heart is perfectly balanced against the feather, the dead survives and he can be reunited with gods and his loved ones. And he can live forever in the afterlife. So the moral of the story is that you got to be a good person in this life to have an afterlife. While the book has no clear structure, scholars have tried to put a structure to it. It appears to loosely follow a four-part structure. The first few chapters deal with the dead entering their tomb on their journey to the underworld and regaining their speech and motoring skills. In other words, the ability to talk and walk. Just like a baby spends about a year to learn to walk and then another year to talk. In the next few chapters, the dead rise up to learn all about the various gods. Or kids go to school to learn about the world and science and society and how everything works. In the third part, the dead travels on their journey following the movement of the sun and finally appearing before Osiris, the god of fertility. In the final section, the book contains spells on how to protect yourself, find food and navigate the various places. Now I'll summarize the Tibetan Book of the Dead before I compare the two. 